the environment. I actually won't. I'll try not to worry about that right now. And just leave this here as is. Um, yeah. So does this make it any easier to switch to a new geometry? And I think it does because now what I'm going to do is create a new and entirely separate geometry. I can create an entirely separate material, I think. I think the material, I don't know if I can deep copy this. Can I? I probably can't deep copy a shader. But the vertex shader and the fragment shader source, if I save those, then I could make a copy of it. I'll actually just make another RPC. Even though that's inefficient. Yeah, then try to iron out the kinks later. Okay. So let's create the geometry, create the channel, create the geometry stuff. Maybe this should be a function called like bit geometry. And that does this. Then I can do... Then I can even just create it. I can do this step too. I can just read that geometry. I'll do everything the same way from there. Um, and return this. Great. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the material. Um, this should be done up here. Move this up here. Oh wait, no, that's still here. And this will be getting the material response and creating the material. Oh, I just have to do this, I guess. I think I only have to do this for fog, for fog materials. There's a chance I have to do it for other ones too. But just because of the one, this was, the way this was laid out, this extension directive was in the wrong place. Anyway, I'll put this here, and then just return that. I'll try to organize this like this. Get a geometry. Get a material. And then create the mesh from there. Okay, see if this works. It still does. But this logic is much more neatly encapsulated. Now, as for this part, this needs to be done pretty much before rendering. Mm, I think I'll still, I'm still just going to have to leave that for now. Take out this logic. Rotate mesh. I think that's fine. Creating the mesh here, I think it's also fine. All right. 
so then the only thing the only thing left to answer is um not here open so then the only thing the only thing left to answer is um not here open jail render where do i read in that that information from the environment This is the place where I render meshes. Should I like somehow I need to have a list of things that this particular material needs from the environment or from its its geometry like the model view matrix, projection matrix, view matrix. I think, um, maybe I won't do this here, or maybe I won't do it now. Maybe I should just take this, like this in its entirety, to be the function for creating a brand new object. And potentially this. So that'd be kind of messy. But it does create all new data, so there shouldn't be any danger of um, reading data that's already in use. Get the geometry, get the material, set some information to the material. Let me just do that and then create the mesh. And this will be my function for creating the mesh. I can do this later after that, the rotation. Let me see if this works. Okay, and this works. It doesn't do any updating. And then this can be like bit mesh. It will take a geometry and a material. This should be at least really clean, and I don't need this updater. Wait, where is this even used? Oh, it's a callback for the widget. I'll move that near the widget in that case. Negative 11. this point, I think it should be relatively simple to switch between them. Because when I, when I switch to a new geometry, I think all I have to do is this. Get geometry, get material, the mesh, create the mesh here. And then remove the old one and then add a new one. Mm 
I'm ignoring the what's well, actually from the callback though. Geometry, this is gonna have to. Hmm, maybe I could just make it. Pick a geometry at random. Because I don't want to. I don't feel like parsing the. The user input. <clears throat> yeah, I think I gotta parse it. Oh well. Um, do you have pygi that core that get value? The sender. Here I can pass that name in. And then here, and then this. The same get at your trick. Yeah, like that if this indentation would work with me like this empty request oh i'd have to i can't pass nothing i need to pass service pb2 dot whatever Of this. And this geometry request. Great. Okay, now there's a positive probability that this will work. Or it'll require passing a name somewhere. Or here I'll just do sphere, I guess. Oh, the geometry is part of a name, actually. So it'd be like this. I have to pass in your geometry. Okay, so that works. Swapping still causes a crash somewhere. Oh, it's because I'm not listening. I still have to add an updater to it. Okay. Um... For geometry, geometry change. It's equal to none. And I want to check is if this isn't none, then I'll remove it. Or remove the mesh. Oh, this is a new mesh. Don't know why I keep doing that. This for new mesh. If new mesh is not done, remove the mesh and then new mesh.
and do this. Actually, I don't. I don't know if I need that non local there. Um, so what should this callback do? Create the mesh, then just say new mesh equals that. Um, so what should this callback do? Create the mesh, then just say new mesh equals that. It won't do the removing. So hopefully, when the callback is made, this will update the new mesh. And then the listener on the existing mesh will fire, it'll remove itself, and it'll add the new one. Okay, so we have a sphere. Same thing. I wonder where that crash happened. I'm going to replace this with the pass. Try switching it now. It still happens. So it must be somewhere with this. I wonder if it's from passing the context or something? Okay, surely this won't have a problem. Okay, so that doesn't. Thank God. This does. I think. Wait, no it doesn't. It's switching, it's not crashing. Is it a material? It is something with the material. Which is unfortunate because I think that's the most complicated part. Okay, what about this? is reading information that's shared with the renderer. Oh, it's it must be passing this context. Well, no, you can use the same context, can't you? Well, I guess I'll see. Yeah, I'll just comment this, return none. Yeah, and see if that has a problem. Wait, what happened? Did it try to do something with that material? 130. Oh, it replaced it here too. I basically, um, I'll do return none. I'll just pass true or something. And if return none, it'll just return a none. Sure. So now when I switch this, something still crashed. So I'll move this here. Also, the song is annoying me. some discord okay that was fun
I'll try switching again. Okay, now it works. So it's something within creating the bong material. It must be creating a shader. You must not be able to compile a new shader, I guess. Which is weird. Huh, I guess you can't compile a new shader, which is weird. Huh, I guess you can't compile a new shader while the render is in use. Maybe that makes sense. I think the solution... Okay. Um... Everything done within Listen for New Mesh isn't done while the renderer is rendering. So I think I want to just do everything here. So just like new geometry name. I'll just set new geometry name equals this. And this will all be done in the updater. So all in updater, it's going to see if that's not none. And if it's not none, it's going to create the new geometry, create the new material, create the new mesh, remove the current one, and replace the new mesh. Remove the current one, replace the new one. And hopefully, we can take out this. Okay. Okay, it worked. It doesn't switch back from that one. And the reason it doesn't switch back from that one is because this one doesn't have the listener. But I don't think there's any reason why it can't. I think I can just say new mesh. That I had updater listen for new mesh. Yeah. That made it not work. Wait, what happened? Well, that crashed everything. Wasn't expecting that. Is this like... I don't know, close that. Maybe that caused an infinite loop or something? Wait, where am I? Here, where was I? Here. Don't add this updater. And now I can switch once. Ooh, why would this... It seems weird that this would cause some sort of a crash.
adding the existing function as an updater. Hmm. I guess I could just write the function again or something. Couldn't I? It's really unsatisfying that that does that. And this was a different mesh, an entirely new one. Why would that cause a crash? And this was a different mesh, an entirely new one. Why would that cause a crash? Oh, maybe it's because I didn't set the new one to none. So wouldn't I want to remove the mesh, add the new mesh? And then new geometry name equals none. I might actually have to do this before I add it. No, I think this I think that'll be fine. Oh, this just has to be non-local. No, same thing. What if I set it to none right here? Okay, then it works. Okay. I have to do it. I have to find the exact line where this stops working. Works there. Works there. Oh, it's only here. I think when you add updater, it calls like updater at zero. So that might be why this is going wrong. Yeah, and then it doesn't work anymore. Okay. Okay, well, I'll just set this not to none as soon as I don't need it. Well, now I'll do it here. Give them geometry material mesh. We are at the the updater and then replace it. Cool. So now I think I should be able to rotate, rotate them both. So here I'll do mesh dot add updater this, then I'll do it here too. Yeah. And we need the light position. So here's a light position. And this is going to be passed into the shader for the mesh. I think all I need to do is put that here. Yeah, I don't know if those will be updated correctly. Update light position. Oh, there's already one here. So maybe I just need to move that one up. And it's negative 11, not positive. Okay. That is, in fact, rotating. And I can switch them. Perfect. Now the question is, why is the position weird? That should be negative 11. 
It's so close. But the light is in a weird place. Zero, zero, negative 11. Should this be... Hey, Evergram, what's up? Should this be zero, zero, zero? Okay, perfect. And... Great, I can move the location of the lights, too. This will be really good for seeing what the different geometries do. 